just read the book. And it's not even the whole book. It's a couple paragraphs and a graphic. It's, a couple paragraphs <laughs> it's and a graphic. not a heavy lift. <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Rexair Professional Pilot Academy of Sebring, Florida. Florida has been the go-to flight training destination for nearly a century. Rexair is a soup to nuts outfit that's got housing, classroom space. They fly RV-12 aircraft that are brand new factory built. They've got everything a flight student needs to be successful. Rexair is a bit different than most academies in that it's intentionally small. So there's more one-on-one -on -one CFI to student activity. And since the students all live together, the students all support each other. The goal of Rexair and their technologically advanced aircraft is to do the best they can do to help you get where you want to be for your professional flying life. So give them a call, 309-397-6191 or drop them a line, info at rexair.net. Rexair Professional Pilot Academy, Sebring, Florida. Pat, it's ironic, I think, but... The method of getting into the VFR traffic pattern at a non-towered airport when you're coming from the wrong side. So if it's a left-hand pattern, we're coming from the opposite side. It's the simplest, easiest, preferred system that the FAA actually uses the term preferred if you do it correctly. But if you do it incorrectly, it becomes a pretty risky maneuver that screws everything up. I wonder why this is so poorly mis so poorly understood when it's so easy to get the, the procedure. It's just a cakewalk, isn't it? So you're talking about the dreaded teardrop entry to the downwind, a term that you will never find in any FAA literature. Yeah, uh, but we commonly use that phrase. It's just the FAA, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't. It's depicted that way in Chapter 8 of the most recent version of the Airplane Flying Handbook, Chapter 7, if you're looking at the previous uh, handbook. And really what, um, what sparked this conversation between you and me, Jamie, is, um, believe it or not, disagreement on social media. Shocking. <laughs> I saw, uh, I don't know, it was a few days ago on one of the platforms, someone uh, making reference to the teardrop entry. And oh my gosh, the comments that it got. And, you know, it got me thinking because I'll, I'll tell you quite honestly, uh, I don't like that entry at all. And for me, it's personal. Um, I've almost been hit twice. Uh, by people that are doing the so-called teardrop entry to the downwind, doing that incorrectly. And therein lies the problem. It's not understood. It's oftentimes not taught correctly because the flight instructors may not fully understand it or have read what the procedure really is. Or somebody has heard about this but never looked it up to see how it should be done. If it's done correctly... It's safe. I still don't like it for a number of reasons, but if it's done safe, it's 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 if it's done correctly, uh, it's not unsafe. But here here are the problems, at least from my perspective. Here are the problems. The airplane flying handbook says to overfly the airport 500 feet above traffic pattern altitude. So let's just say the field elevation is zero MSL, so we don't have to do any arithmetic here because I don't like arithmetic. So we're going to overfly the field. Most airports are 1,000 foot uh, AGL traffic patterns, most of them. So we're going to overfly the airport at 1,500 feet. The airplane flying handbook follows right up with that saying, however, twins and turbines fly at 500 feet above traffic pattern altitude. So it's recommended that you fly 500 feet above that. And that's such an easy thing to miss for a lot of low time people or people who don't study. There's not one traffic pattern altitude. There's at yeah. least two. So yeah. you've got to be above that higher altitude. You're exactly right. So that makes it 2000 feet. Um, it also goes on to say, and this is a quote, when well clear of the traffic pattern, and it says in a parentheses, approximately two miles, descend to a traffic pattern altitude. 
the the depiction in the airplane flying handbook shows two miles clear of the downwind leg. Now, how wide is the downwind leg, Jamie? Well, it depends who you are. I mean, some people fly that classic 747 pan they're a mile wide, which in my mind is too much. I like being a quarter to a half mile away, frankly, just because if I lose power, I want to make it to pavement. <laughs> okay. But my point is that the downwind leg is an undefined distance from the runway. Yeah. So how can you fly approximately two miles from a point that you don't know where it is? That is a valid point. That no, that is a valid point. I like it. I I always fly out about three miles when because I do like the the teardrop entry. I use it when I come back to my non towered airport from that direction. But my field elevation is my field elevation is one hundred and forty feet. I come across at two thousand, and I go out about three miles. And the the reason is I don't want to be in a descending turn into oncoming traffic in the downwind. I want to be well out of the pattern. And, you know, I went flying because I like it. I'm not trying to shave a tenth off when I'm getting into the more densely packed airspace. So I get well out there. But I get your point. Not everybody does. And it creates a real issue. But let me ask you this. You said I threw fly about three miles out. From what point? From the runway. From the runway. Okay. Yep. Now, I would, I would personally, I would not disagree with that. Because if you figure that the downwind leg is somewhere around a half a mile, maybe to nine tenths or or a mile, maybe, which Mm -hmm. is usually pretty close, then flying three miles out certainly does accomplish what this, this maneuver is, is supposed to be. But I have almost been hit twice in the last Mm -hmm. several years by people doing that because they're crossing midfield at traffic pattern altitude. I've seen, actually saw a near miss not too long ago by someone crossing the traffic pattern at 500 feet above the traffic pattern. And there was a twin coming in on the other side. Um, There are people that begin their descent. Let's say they do cross over at the appropriate altitude. They begin their descent over the runway. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, which not good. Them, not good, which puts them in conflict with the downwind leg potentially. Um, I have seen pilots who uh, who uh, who cross uh, th- at or close to the, the correct altitude, but start their turn at about a mile from the runway, which puts them in potential conflict for people turning crosswind to downwind. Yeah, you're essentially doing a descending turn opposing the downwind traffic and yeah. that's bad juju not a good decision at yeah. all and and i do think that's important you know you're talking about people who start the descent right over the runway i go about three miles out past the runway but i maintain altitude until yes. i'm three miles out then i start a descending turn and i've got a good view of what's over there so i've, I've got a good shot at it yeah. but yeah this is it is ironic. This is a very safe procedure that should work really well, provided you do it correctly. If you do it incorrectly, and I'm sorry to say, I think maybe most people do it incorrectly, yeah. it becomes a very risky maneuver, and unnecessarily so. It's And it's, as you mentioned, it's in the airplane flying handbook. It's in AC 90-66 Charlie for non-towered airports. It's very basic. But this is one of those things, that, in my mind, People learned it wrong initially from a flight instructor who learned their tickets at a towered airport and doesn't really understand non-towered airports. And why wouldn't you, Pat? There's only 5,000 of them. (laughs) Um, And people who don't take their flight reviews seriously, they're not using it as a learning experience. They're using it as a checkbox. Okay, I flew an hour. Here's your money. See you later. We need to continue. We need to be involved in continuing education by an FAA standard, or else we're a danger. So let me offer one other complication or potential complication, and that's surrounding airspace. At my home airport, for example, the intermediate approach fix to a rather busy class Delta airport for their runway 17 is directly over West Houston Airport at 2,000 feet AGL. 
if I'm going to cross the airport at West Houston at 2,000 feet, uh, excuse me, 2,000 feet MSL is the, is, the, uh, is the intermediate altitude. If I'm going to cross West Houston at 2,000 feet AGL, which I'm supposed to do according to this technique, mm -hmm. I'm at 2,100 feet indicated, 100 feet above the intermediate approach fix where jets fly. Yep. And I can tell you from knowing some approach controllers, including our friend Diana, mm -hmm. um, that creates all kinds of havoc at approach control, especially on a busy day when the visibility and ceilings might not be optimum, um, but are perfectly safe to, 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 fly, to fly VFR. Mm -hmm. Complicating it further, so, so, now, so now what do you do? Well, then let's drop down to 1,600 feet, which is 1,500 feet AGL at our airport. But now you're in that 1,500 foot twins and turbine uh, mm -hmm. uh, world. Um, c further complicating it is if you continue flying out about three miles to the runway, you get very, very close to the surface class Bravo airspace at our airport. So how, what's the answer to that? Well, first of all, common sense, common sense is, is a good start. But the FAA does offer an alternative, Jamie, as you know, they say cross midfield at traffic pattern altitude and join the downwind leg if mm -hmm. the pattern's not busy. Right. And th that becomes, and I will say, I actually prefer the teardrop entry. I don't have that 2,000 foot right over me like you do. But the reason I prefer it is because I've been on downwind before and had somebody use that alternate approach. And they're right over the runway and they call their turning downwind. And I say, hey, I'm on downwind. And they're like, yeah, we don't see you. We're turning downwind. I'm like, well, I'm the guy who's directly in front of you. <laughs> and they're basically, they're turning. They're going to come right up on my tail. Yeah. That alternate method, which is a perfectly valid method when the yeah. airport's not busy. It really does work. But it does require you to give way to aircraft on the downwind or entering on the 45. And my question to people who are doing it is always, how are you going to do that? Do you have a plan? Is there some way that if you get in that spot, that guy would, did with me, that you have a method of dealing? Oh, I didn't pay attention to the radio calls. I didn't realize that guy was right in front of me because yeah. a right turn would be bad. A left turn would be a problem. And going straight's not great either. <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and, you know, and so I've, I've had conversation with people who say, well, look, I'm just going to, I'll fly around, let's say the departure leg of the airport, I'll fly around that side of the airport and come back around, make a big circle to the downwind leg. You know, that's a perfectly legitimate um, way to, 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 to think about it. But remember, AIM and all the other alphabet books that we talk about, say that if you're departing the airport, you fly straight out on the departure leg, not mm -hmm. the upwind leg, the departure leg to a thousand feet and then either continue going straight or make a left-hand turn in the case of left-hand traffic. So what, what happens if you coming across, you know, on the, on the departure leg crossing to enter the pattern on a basically an extended crosswind, what happens if you happen to be at the same altitude as somebody that's flying straight out which is an acceptable way to leave the traffic pattern. Well, there's a potential mm -hmm. conflict there. Okay, well, let's come around the other side on the arrival end of the runway. All right, same thing. Let's say that we're, we're, we're crossing uh, the, the extended final at 2,000 feet and somebody's practicing an instrument approach or has just decided because out of sheer laziness and because they own all the airspace, they're going to do a straight in and to hell with everybody else. Um, there's a potential conflict there. So, you know, we're talking about a lot of uh, almost theoretical stuff. I mean, we're, we're, we're assuming a lot of things here, but the point is that at a non tower probably the biggest point is that a non-towered field, there are recommended ways to enter the traffic pattern. Um, and we may not like them. We may not agree with them, but, they are the recommended methods of entering the traffic pattern. And if they're done correctly, they're perfectly safe. Again, I'm not a big fan of the teardrop for the reasons I've already stated. I don't like it, period. Mm -hmm. Have I done it before? Yeah. It, under certain circumstances. Will I do it again? Uh, probably so, under certain circumstances. 
but I'm not a big fan of that for selfish reasons, self-preservation being one of them. Um, uh, but again, if it's done properly, in fact, I used to be adamantly against it. I would go, I would go on a rant on at a, at, at like a, 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 any safety seminar where this came up. And then I got a call from a guy the next morning and he said, I didn't want to say anything during the meeting, but he said, I, I respectfully disagree with you. And here's the reason. And I listened to what he had to say and he made some excellent points, Jamie. He made, and it caused me to change my tune a bit on the teardrop entry. That itself right there is one of the more important things. I'll, I'll bring up two points if I could. One is don't take this personally. There's a preferred procedure. There's an alternate procedure. There's certain amount of traffic. If you have a plan coming in and you flow in with everybody else, life is good. It doesn't matter that Pat and I choose to do a different method. They both work and we don't have to take offense or get in a fight with each other. The second point is you got to keep in mind the most likely place to have a midair is in the traffic pattern on a clear VFR day. And part of the reason for that is people, well, I'm coming in on a left base. I'm coming in on a right base. I'm going straight in because it's non-towered. I can do anything I want. I'm entering this way, that way. And you have a beehive of a mess and nobody can stop. So it really is, I know it may seem to people like, that's just two boomers talking about rules. I don't care. Well, you know what? It literally will save your life one day. So pick a method or be flexible enough to use either or depending on the circumstance and behave yourself because people's lives literally depend on this working out. Yeah, I, I guess if, if we could just if we could just leave viewers, regardless of which side of the traffic pattern argument you might be on, just read the book. Look at what the book says. Do it the way the book says to do it, with the exception of, I would suggest, Jamie, your idea of going three miles from the runway center line versus two miles from an undefined distance being the mm -hmm. downwind leg would be a reasonable substitution for the words in the book that accomplishes the, the meaning and the intent of the words in the book without question. So just, yeah. just read the book. Read and it's not even the whole book. book. It's a couple paragraphs it's, and a graphic. It's a couple <laughs> paragraphs. It's and a graphic. not a heavy lift. <laughs> so, so that's that's the way I would I would hope. Uh, that's what I would hope people take away from this particular video, is that regardless of how you do it, do it the way the books recommend, and 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 do it the right way, and we would avoid a whole lot of this argument back and forth on social media if people would just do it the right way. So I am 100% with you, boss. That <laughs> well said. And with that, I think we, uh, we've we covered the subject. We've given everybody a reference point and we've given our big boomer attitude to them. So we'll see where it goes from there. I will catch you back here next time, about a week from now, Pat, what do you say? You want to do it? I'm, I'm game, man. See you then. Adios.